Welcome to Pedagogy of a Portrait. My name is Dina Wright, and I'm the Content Area Specialist for Technology Integration for Lyon County School District. And I'm joined today by my co-host, Dave Metter, and Carrie Bunyard. And today we have a special guest, Yay! Mr. Logan. Hi, Tim Logan. Glad to be here. Thank you for joining us today. Um, just to start, a little bit of background about Lyon County School District. We are located in northern Nevada, about an hour from Lake Tahoe. Um, our district consists of about 50,000 people and serves 18 schools, which is about 9,000 students, um, which includes five smaller communities, Fernley, um, Dayton, Arrington, Silver Springs and Smith Valley, and we are the fourth largest district in the state of Nevada. Um, and the purpose of this podcast is to create a place for all to witness lifelong learning and create a community that empowers everyone and anyone with resources that will lead to problem solving, creativity, exploring and finding joy in learning, um, sharing some insight and inspiration, and having some fun along the way. So cool. that being said, we are going to get started with our guest today, and um, we're going to actually start with a game. And oh. <laughs> you should have warned me about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the game, have you ever played two, two Truths and a Lie? Yes. Okay, so today we're going to play Two Truths and a Dream. So I think it goes, you have two truths, and then what, what one dream is that you have to figure out and then we're going to figure out which one's the dream. Um, so I, I, I guess I'll start. So, um, uh, one of mine is I had three minutes of playing time at the Tocitos Fiesta Bowl uh, with Oregon State University um, during a football game. So, and I was live broadcast at ABC. Um, another one is um, traveling uh, through all of Europe. Um, I went studying at the uh, a university in Europe um, and gaining all of that knowledge. And then another one would be um, visiting every theme, Disney theme park in the world. I got your dream. <laughs> <laughs> I think. You want to call it out? Go. Yeah, I call it out. I think uh, visiting right. Disney Park is probably your dream. That is my dream, yes. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I've been to every national park. I have ran over six half marathons. I am a fitness coach. So is your dream you want to go to all of the parks? Yeah. Is that okay. right? <laughs> okay. okay. So I've been to London, I've been to Scotland and Ireland, and I've ran four half marathons. I'm going to say London. For my dream. As your dream, yeah. Actually, it's Scotland and Ireland. Oh. That's okay. my You've next been to to adventure. I have. Well, uh, to make it, I guess, a little difficult as well, well, we'll stay on a similar theme, but I have attended all the national parks east of Colorado. Um, <laughs> I have scuba dived to a depth of 110 feet, and I have ran six marathons. Is it scuba diving? I have actually done that. Whoa! That's That's cool. I am a certified scuba diver. Do I get to do it very often? No, I don't. I got it when I was a 16-year-old. That's pretty cool. No, no, that is not. I say the marathon. You've only done five. (laughs) I've actually done six marathons. Oh, my gosh. I definitely like physical activity. By process of elimination, <laughs> it's the national parks. We have attended uh, a lot of them, but we still want to attend 10 more. I have never seen a bad national park. They are so beautiful. Well, all right, everybody, thank you for participating. That was fun. All right, so why don't we start by you telling us a little bit about yourself and your career in education. Perfect, and I do want to thank you guys for allowing me to be part of the podcast. I think uh, what you guys are doing is great work, and I'm excited to be asked to be part of that today. Um, uh, I, was, I was told by a colleague just today when we were talking about uh, being on the podcast, he said, "What are you, are you helping to be part of a sleep study um, <laughs> experiment? <laughs> so hopefully this doesn't put everybody to sleep, but... Uh, Surely, thank you. So just to tell a little bit about about myself, I've been in education for 25 years. Um, Started out in a middle school in Utah, and after that first year, I was ready to get out of education, to be honest with you. Uh, My wife said, give it one more year and um, maybe try the high school. So moved back to uh, Dayton, Nevada, went to the high school there and uh, fell in love with it. 
So to all you middle school uh, teachers out there, uh, well done. <laughs> I think I can go back now, but that first year was it was a little rough. So I, I taught at Dayton High School for eight years in math, and I did um, some PE and uh, coached soccer and track uh, during that time. And then after that, I got into uh, administration and did three years as assistant principal at Dayton High, followed by four years as the principal. And then uh, just kind of continued to follow the path that was outlined for me. And I jumped into the district office three years as the uh, human resource director there. And uh, the last six years, I've been the deputy superintendent. This is my home. I love Lyon County. I'm a full fan of it. Um, I've seen my kids and just explain a little bit, I guess, more about myself. Um, all, I have four boys and all of them have attended uh, Dayton schools, done our kids and our family very well. That's a little bit about myself and um, being a product of Lyon County, I guess, uh, as far as an educator and my kids being part of the actual system. And you said you started in middle school that started first year? First year was middle, um, was middle school in Utah, uh, high yeah. school. And, um, and, and just being part of the, the district office now, you, you get to see all levels and just the miracles that are, are happening all over the place. Uh, and everybody finds their niche and personality that matches where they're teaching, and it's it's wonderful mm -hmm. to see. I guess, would it be fair to ask what was your favorite? Thing or to see. favorite like a favorite? Like with, in the journey of yeah, education? Journey of yeah. education. Yeah. As an administrator, you get bogged down sometimes with um, being the complaint department, uh, to, to say the least, I guess, upset parents and and things that might occur. But I can tell you that I always found a sweet spot with the CLS kids, to be honest with you. I loved going in there. It didn't matter what was happening. Um, they loved you for who you are. They were happy. Uh, and so that was kind of my escape from administration whenever I needed to get away. Now, I, uh, in the district office, I'll tell you, there's not a better place to be than the elementary schools and, and go into a kindergarten classroom and they'll love on you. And, get some hugs. Yeah. <laughs> nap time. Everybody loves nap time and snacks. <laughs> no, no. Uh, I don't know if I could teach at that level because that takes a nice amount of energy. But what a what a place to be! In. And so, but no, I, every every classroom, it's it's just fun to see the joy that can be brought to students. Maybe this will roll right into that next question. Then, so, what is your why and for, for why you do what you do? Like, why have you stuck with education for long, so long? I think, and I think if you talk to a lot of educators, it comes back to moments that they had as a as a kid as well. Um, it, your your why modifies, I think, as you kind of go out. But originally, I mean, I had I had amazing teachers that um, picked me up. Um, so people don't necessarily know this, but I was struggling in math when I was in elementary school, and later I've now become a math yeah, teacher. Is where I ended up. Um, but it was my fourth grade. I was not doing well on all the assessments, um, and we actually had the state teacher of the year that was in our school, and she talked to my mom and sold my soul in the summer, <laughs> but uh, I, I used to ride my bike about four miles over to this house of this, and, and, and I don't encourage you to do that anymore. <laughs> With different worlds. It is a different world, but uh, I would go to this teacher's house uh, throughout the summer and just got a ton of one-on-one -on -one help, and it opened my eyes up for the love of me. just kind of grew from there. Um, and so that that's where it's kind of started. And then you have that, you know, you have that special coach, uh, I had track uh, cross country coach that just kind of took me under their wing. And, you know, there was many times where my family couldn't pick me up and I was left at the school. I didn't grow up necessarily in the best of circumstances, but, you know, that, that coach took me under their wing. So I just kind of fell in love with education and ed educators. My why has changed since. I mean, you get into having your own family and you start seeing the value of um, your own kids going through the system and what that one teacher can do to make a difference for your own family. And so, it, it, again, it's adapted to see the power and the love of education. So that's kind of my why. All right. So what is your vision as you step into the role of superintendent? So, and I, and I try to tell this with a new leader you don't go in there and start just wanting to change everything <laughs> that that's not, that's not good leadership. There are, and, and this is the benefit of me being in the role that I've been for, for the last six years is I've been part of the work. Um, so for me, my, my vision is to carry on the great work. It's it, we don't need drastic changes. I really do believe that Lyon County is out in front leading some great things. Um, there's a ton of work that's still needing to be done. I think we implemented something like five new curriculums or something this, <laughs> yeah. this, this past that's year or so. Fun. So, um, 
I know there's a ton of work that needs to be done. Um, but I don't think I don't think we need to change the direction that we're we're going. The hardest part is making sure that we're all swimming really in the right direction. I also want to lean upon our, our vision. Our vision is every student, every classroom, every day. So I don't think that needs to change. Mm -hmm. um, we, we just need to focus on kids and that they make sure that we're meeting the needs of every single one of them. Um, and so I, I think for, for me, I used the word earlier, miracle. I think that there needs to be these miracles that are done in the classroom every day and they just need to continue. Um, I, I just read an article and I think it was titled, um, feral kids, uh, feral and Ill Ill illiterate kids, I think is what it was titled. Um, we, we have challenges, but I think as educators, we need to realize that these are kids and we, we can work miracles. Um, there, there's a lot of troubles and struggles in the homes. Um, and yet we get them every day and we can, we can turn them into great, great kids and great, uh, uh, societal influences. And so for me, I, my hope is uh, that we continue the great work. We, my vision is that the miracles continue to happen in the classroom and that we love these kids. That's awesome. And you say um, we have a lot more work to do. So what's, what's next? Um, I, I think, again, going back to the Portrait of a Learner, um, we need to instill it, though. Like it, it has to become part of what we do. I, I think back to my educational time. And I, I won't say his teacher's name. I, I'm getting to that age where a lot of my teachers have passed away, but I don't know if this one's still living. So I won't say his name, but he was my calculus teacher uh, junior year in high school. And I, I still have the notes. They're beautiful. <laughs> I had great notes. He gave great notes, but that is what we did all day. Um, so fast forward uh, two years later, I'm starting out to be an engineer major and I had to take physics for engineering. Um, I didn't make it, but a few months into that, and I, I ended up withdrawing from the class. It was I, I couldn't put the math into application, and I just felt like that that was how education kind of was back then. Um, it was a little more sit and get, but today I, I'm hoping that we're taking these things and we're actually g giving – tasks to kids, allowing them to some self-direction, making it applicable. Um, again, it's, it's the portrait. And so um, a, as a math teacher, um, I, I never understood um, why we weren't taking our kids out and measuring the bleachers and doing rise over run and, um, you know, or the Pythagorean theorem to help understand why we need right angles um, when you're building a house. And these are just things that uh, I think we have so many more abilities and tools in our, in our toolkit now to be able to help kids. And so where, where do we, I think we need to go? Where's the work? It, it is still in, in this portrait and, and trying to, to do that. And again, learning curriculum. I, I don't want to, I don't want to downside that either. There's a lot of work in the curriculum and, and uh, teaching kids. Yeah, and those real world experiences really do help make those connections. So again, that application piece, mm -hmm. that's where that learning sticks, right? Yeah, when they can apply it to self, that's one thing we're talking about, or we're doing some PD on mm -hmm. how the brain learns. Um, and that's one thing that we talk about is like, it's one thing to give a kid a vocabulary word, but then you've got to give an experience that they've gone through, whether they're actively doing like measuring bleachers to then make it stick to something like, so you can make the learning sticky, but you've got to give it something to stick to. Um, and if you don't give it something to stick to the brain just pushes it out. So I love, I love your vision um, around where that's going because like we're trying to create those real world experiences. Um, I don't know if you want to touch on this either, but like that work-based work that we're doing, like we're trying to really look at work-based learning to, to give kids opportunities to explore careers beyond school. That school is not about passing standardized tests, but it's about connecting with their community and finding um, the ability to engage in careers or lifelong learning beyond the classroom. So um, I just, I love that vision and where you're going with it. That's awesome. Yeah, and I'm not trying to do all the talking, but uh, you are 100% right. With work-based learning, what a great opportunity that we have. And it is not just a high school or middle school mm -hmm. thing. Um, it is it is from the bottom to the top. And so, yeah, you're going to see that kind of roll out as, as um, hopefully one of our goals in this upcoming year is to create more work-based learning opportunities for kids. That may be bringing in a... a, a 
construction worker into the classroom to, to talk on job opportunities. Uh, it may be career fairs. It may be just something that you're already doing in your, your science class that you, you want to talk about um, that exploration. High school gets a little easier. We, we, we're going to get out there and we're going to hopefully give them some opportunities to job shadow or um, uh, go to a warehouse and, and learn about um, whatever it might, cabinet making, whatever it might be. Um, but hopefully we're giving those opportunities K-12 with, with our students. I have a question just about the workplace learning. Um, is that a different program at the high school or is it a class? Or? So workplace learning is just... Uh, generalized, everybody can receive work-based learning kind of opportunities, mm -hmm. but there are also, when you get into secondary, you start getting into potentially uh, career and technical education mm -hmm. classes um, or, or an accounting class. Like it gets a little easier when you start getting into the high school level, but it can be done at any level. Mm -hmm. I don't know that. And so those classes are offered at the high school all for sure. schools. Yes. At every, at every second, at every high school for sure, there are, CT classes. It's not called work based learning. It's okay. It's a agricultural class or it's a, a welding well, it's class. It's like an elementary setting. classroom, and they were talking about the Diderod. Um, and then the teacher brought in, like through FaceTime, like a guy who was in the Iditarod um, and talked about what they do to prep for that. And like, it is kind of its own career. Like if you really think about the time and the energy and raising the dogs and everything else that's involved, I mean, it is a career option, um, maybe in Alaska, but like <laughs> it is a career option. Um, and that's, that's work. I mean, work-based learning because you're giving kids the ability to explore and talk to someone in the field at a young age to then maybe that sparks them as they get into the upper grades of maybe I want to get into animal sciences and or my connection maybe with with the farming association or or whatever that is like to to do that work um so I think it does apply to all grade levels I think is um and it and it may be more honed and specific at the, the secondary level no and that's like building the foundation at the elementary and middle the elementary and middle school to, and those experiences are going to be the ones that they remember and then moving on. So. Yeah. And having those opportunities. Mm -hmm. I remember as a kid when the police officer would come in, you're like, Oh, so cool. Like, yeah. um, and it kind of made you want to be a police officer, right? When you were young. And then we have a um, speaker today. Or the fire department comes in and does their demonstration or whatever, you know? And so it just, it sparks that possibility, you know, like this is kind of cool. So or even Dayton elementary and some other elementary schools have had the black, black Hawk helicopters come in. Yeah. Just that ability to say, Hey, look at this. Like, this is cool. Like I could fly a helicopter. Like, um, I think it just gives them that spark and that, that excitement, like back to portrait lifelong learning and um, connected learning to see if that's something I want to do. Okay, so the last question actually doesn't have anything to do with education, but I hear you are training for half Ironman. I am. And out of those three <laughs> disciplines, so it's biking, swimming, and running, what is your favorite? Uh, biking is actually my favorite. Um, Especially going downhill. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> um, the, you know, this one's the, it's in Salem, Oregon. I've run one other half Ironman before, um, and uh, this one I, I, I get to do with two of my boys. And so there's a very much a competitiveness in me. And so, um, so the swimming is probably my weakest. The good part about this particular one uh, in Salem is it's actually in a river. So I'm hoping it's a high flow water year <laughs> and I can just put on some floaties and just, you know, kind of cruise down the river. But um, no, I, I, I like the biking. I'm definitely a running background though. So that is actually probably where my strength more lies. Um, and then the swimming is probably the weakest, but probably about mid-pack in the swimming. So you say you're competitive. You mean you, you're competing against your boys. Oh, 100%. You want to beat them. 100%. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, the one I did with one of my boys in St. George and um, – yeah, he almost drowned in the lake, and I was so excited. <laughs> not really, but <laughs> I got out of the transition area, and he was not there yet. And I'm like, oh, this is awesome. So I took off on the bike, and um, yeah, he caught me in the second transition, and then it was all over after that. He is quite the runner, but um, yeah, very competitive against, well, Gets myself, but uh, just bragging rights. Yeah, that's yeah, what it is. Okay. <laughs> dads, dads have to hold a certain cloud. I don't know. <laughs> well, we wish you luck with that. Well, thank you. Yeah. Like, is there anything else you'd like to share? I think the one thing I I, I just want to 
reiterate the power of a teacher. I mean, I, I really do believe that. I believe that um, you you have more time often with these kids and even their own families do. And so just that power of a teacher. And I, I think, again, that's what carved a lot of our lives out was that that one teacher. I, I look back and I didn't necessarily say this. I have four boys. Um, and again, they're all coming out of Dayton area. But one's a physicist. Um, he's currently studying um, laser, uh, like an Apple Watch, so that it can test um, blood sugar levels. So okay. you don't have to necessarily poke yourself anymore. So he's on his research team. My second son's a, a physics major for education. My third is math education. And my uh, fourth is a sophomore at Dayton High School, and he's just trying to figure it out. But um, <laughs> no, I love him. And, but uh, again, we we have the power right within our own counties and and we have success stories that are out there and i think those need to be celebrated um i yes i see them in my own uh home but i also know that for every person i talk to there's a success story out there whether that's military whether that's a career um in cte or 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 just even sticking around and, and working retail it doesn't matter but these these are our success stories that we need to celebrate and so I just want to reiterate that again, the power of that, that one teacher, that's all it really, or an employee, to be honest with you, it's not even just our teachers, it's our staff, um, that custodian that takes somebody under their wings, um, and, and brings them through. So please don't ever doubt yourself and the power that you have in this great work. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. So now we are going to shift gears and answer some questions that have come in through email. The first question is, where does vocabulary instruction fit into the science of reading? So I, Who wants to answer that? Well, this goes back to Scarborough's <laughs> rope. I'm looking at Carrie over here, because that's like the, the CCRI work and everything, but that um, that um, that language comprehen comprehension part, uh, vocabulary is huge. Um, uh, part of it is, like, it's one thing to decode a word, um, which is that phonemic piece, but like, so we can decode it, but if we don't know its meaning, um, then it's hard to then comprehend anything we're reading. Um, I did an activity actually with uh, some, um, a school, actually elementary school in Dayton, and I gave them, um, it was a, an article on um, a rundown of a cricket match um, and had them read it. And like, of course the vocabulary was, it's all English, but it was all different vocabulary. And you could see the frustration happen. Like, what is this? What is going on? Like, what? And of course, it was like, you saw teachers becoming unruly. Like, this doesn't make sense. And then they started talking. Of course, I was playing the role of the teacher. Like, no, be quiet. Um, and it was, but then there was one, one teacher in the room who knew what it was and totally just was able to answer all the questions. Um, so, like, that vocabulary is so important because, again, it's a huge part of, of reading comprehension. Um, and that's why I think as teachers, it's important to front load, like, pre-read something, front load that vocabulary ahead of time so when we engage in the text we're not creating a cognitive um, overload in that so I, 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 just, I go back to Scarborough's rope and everything on that um, and making those connections like you said like they have to you know make it stick to their brain so whether they're acting it out or yeah. drawing a picture of it um, and I have seen it all over the district I mean they are in the slides or they're up in classrooms and I feel like I've seen it more being talked about than it was maybe in the past. I mean, I think vocabulary has always been there, but maybe it hasn't been as strong the last few years. And so um, hopefully we'll see some really good, some really good growth with it. Yeah. Also helping expand their language, which then, yeah, definitely makes sense to that comprehension. Well, I go back to like, remember, do you guys remember the T4S days? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that was a big thing. Yeah, your word wall, <laughs> right? Wall. I remember like being a new teacher, like, why? Like, and then, but now that I've dug into the science of reading and everything, I'm like, okay, yeah, you yeah, know, like, it totally makes sense. So, I think it needs good. to be in every subject. I mean, that's just real. Yeah. And every subject has their own um, vocabulary that they need. Yeah. And so, especially when you get into standardized testing and stuff, it's, it's largely vocabulary. They may be able to do the math problem, but they can't understand what the question is asking. So let's talk about the learning summit in August. What learning opportunities have been submitted so far and can people uh, present with a group? Yes. Like I, I am. I, so I've sent out a couple emails already. I'm going to keep bombarding with emails uh, until the end of the school year. Um, but we are looking for presenters. 
Um, and I know there's some great expertise. There's some really great things happening in classrooms. And truly, this is an opportunity to share out your brilliance um, with everybody. And, and one thing I love about the summit is like you leave, like I always go to a session and I leave with a new nugget of information or something I could try in my classroom. Um, so we would love like individuals to present. If you want to present, like cause you can't do it by yourself, you want to present with your, your team or group, that's totally fine. We are looking for anyone um, that would like to present something that's just brilliantly going well in their classroom or something that they're doing in their classroom that's, that's working really well. Um, current things we're seeing kind of coming in um, is a lot of like tech-based things. So I, I've seen a couple around um, IA, so um, artificial intelligence um, that's coming in. Um, and so that's one thing that's being worked on. I've seen, um, I've seen uh, one with Edpuzzle um, and how to use that, that in the classroom. Um, we're seeing some zones of, um, zones of regulation um, coming in. So I think there's going to be some really awesome opportunities um, to get some great ideas from academics to behavior um, to just maybe systems, progress monitoring systems that are going on in schools. So um, truly looking forward to that day. Um, but we are, yeah, we would love some more presenters. I'm looking for more people to present. Um, I think the power, like uh, Mr. Logan was saying, is with our, the power of our teachers, like the miracle workers that are happening every day in the classroom. Um, we would love to see you present so we can spread that miracle out to other schools. We're also very excited. We have a keynote speaker. His name's Sean Buchanan. Um, he's out of Oklahoma. Uh, the guy's extremely funny and uh, will be entertaining. So we're excited about that piece of it too, just to, I guess, plant that seed of we're looking forward to that August meeting with everybody. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. All right. Um, so let's move to celebrations and highlights. So I heard one today. Um, shout out to Friendly Elementary School. I guess they, I, maybe you're a runner. So like, or you're all runners. Actually. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. That was your like, dream, wasn't it? That was my dream to be a runner. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> <We're good Disney. laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so, so like uh, Apex. So like they did an Apex run, which I don't know what Apex stands for. But with that, they raised um, like $15,000 for their booster club, which I thought was amazing. Like of all the cool things that the boosters can do with that. But maybe you can explain what an Apex is because I have no idea. I don't know what that company is either, but I can tell you uh, there's uh, a lot of energy. We actually went to one at East Valley uh, last year and gave the kids high fives. But yeah, just a lot of energy. Music's going and they run in circles. There's really not a certain amount of laps or anything they need to perform, but it's just, again, I, I know the kids have fun. Plus, again, what a great cause that it, mm -hmm. it turns around and goes to the boosters, which only helps the school and kids. So, Actually, when we went to do some progress monitoring, um, for HMH, um, Carrie and I were there, and Apex was. I think they go to the school daily, and they have different focuses for the day. Mm -hmm. And as we were walking by, um, Jamie and Ms. Henderson and Miss um, Bloom were standing like in between two grassy areas on the sidewalk, and these kids had lots of silly string that were blue and orange, and they were standing back to back, and those kids got to all take a turn just. <laughs> I think because awesome. they need the most money for that. that yeah, yeah, one yeah. of their yeah. challenges. Yeah, it's pretty fun. I'm, I'm not sure it was fun for them. But <laughs> I, I think another celebration is we've released this podcast and we've gotten a really great response. Um, just within the first week, we've had over 100, 100 listens, which is pretty awesome. So um, thank you to all who have been listening and giving us feedback. It's been super positive. And I think, and again, I think our goal with this is to provide the joy and the excitement of the, and share the good things happening in Lyon County. Um, so that way we can find encouragement and joy in, in what we do. So uh, thank you to everyone and, and your comments and feedback. It's, it's been fun. I know I've enjoyed doing this. Um, it's, it's been a fun process. So. I tease that there might only be two listeners to this one, it's my <laughs> wife and myself or something, but um, no, what a great, great thing you guys are trying to do to get the word out there. So you know, if you um, have any questions or have any celebrations that you want to share, please reach out to me, email me at ddegolier at lcsd.org. I'll put my email in the comments and don't forget to subscribe. Check out the other podcasts and resource links. Um, some of our upcoming sessions are going to include information on early literacy skills, um, brain break strategies, small group instruction. Um, 
work-based learning. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. Honestly, it is cool seeing, and uh, you guys are a lot of fun, even Damon. <laughs> so <laughs> might want to hit it at. <laughs> I think, you know, not a lot of people get to have conversations like this, right? A lot of people don't get to see or hear you speak or hear these questions being asked. And so I think it gives us a different perspective too sometimes. Like, yeah. you know. Like, that you're human? You're human. <laughs> <laughs> you're human. You learn that real quick. Yeah. Yeah. Darth Vader at the top. <laughs> <laughs> We're in this together. Yeah. 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 Um, I don't know. There's just something. It's a great way to share lots of different ideas and, and messages and like really get to see people for who they are and what they do right and that's yeah. really cool. thank you so much for listening and joining us on this journey cool yeah. stay strong and keep teaching